Welcome my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated. It's Mary Jane. Let's talk about Growing Up Hip Hop, Season 4, Episode 12, Hard Times. Yes, it is hard times. Boogie's still out here on these drugs. He's still out here acting up, wanting us to believe that he's clean and sober just because he didn't drink at the yacht party that Master P threw. We don't even know if he did drink or not. So, miss me with that. And then we got Pep. She got her a security guard, and she's happy to death. She got herself a young man. Romeo was like, I used to play ball with him in middle school. She's a Kruger. You go, Pep. But Pep, you know, she got a little drinking problem. She likes to drink. She likes to toss it up, baby. And right now, she's with Andre. She ain't worried about if E.J. gets married. She ain't worried about Tyran. I don't know where Tyran and T.T. is living. I don't know if they're still living with Pep. Where they living at in L.A.? Maybe they got an apartment somewhere to stay. It's just like, whoa. I was like, miss me with all that. I was just like, damn, then we got Sam. He's calling, you know, T.T. a cunt. He got that weave in his hair. He only got that weave in his hair for attention. I don't know. He looked like he want to be a rock star, a rapper, a gangbanger, a hood dude, a preppy dude. He's confused. So I don't know how he's getting married anytime soon. And Egypt is just like a lap dog. She don't even know what's going on in the situation. All she knows, she got Sam, and she's happy. She's satisfied, and that's all she need. We ain't heard no music. Well, maybe y'all have, but I didn't hear no music. I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> so, then we have Vanessa. Vanessa is kind of like throwing shots that, you know, Romeo got a crush on her or had a crush on her back in the day. And Angela's not feeling it either. And also, Vanessa wants to start Patri or whatever the shoe brand, shoe company, whatever. Angela wants to put it on hold, put it on the freezer because she's busy with jobs. Vanessa, if you don't get your ass out there and sign them contracts and get that business back up and running and leave it for your daughter, miss me with with that bullshit tell Angela she could do what she needs to do on the side but right now you you your part owner too as well just because she can't commit because she got other gigs doesn't mean that she'll hold you back as well or yet Vanessa you can start a whole new brand something else new it's whatever is clever and it seems like Romeo hit it and missed it with TT he got some of that booty and he is done and through with it because TT feelings look real hurt and Romeo already said, yo, TT looks nice, but you know, I am looking for Angela. And Angela's not looking for you, Romeo. She rather really have our, her ex, her ex fiance, RIP to him. He's passed away. He's been murdered. You know, over the summer, I did a video on it. You guys could check it out. It's just sad that he was fighting for custody. He was fighting to see his son. And he didn't get a chance to see his son before he passed on because he wasn't in contact with Angela because she kept the baby from him. And she wanted child support. I was like, damn, she wanted child support support then we get we hear Vanessa talking about when they were like teenagers they made 50 million dollars you know damn well her baby father didn't have the money that she has I was like whoa that's what you call like yeah and they were supposed to go to court in December and October before he was murdered and boom his life is gone and now he don't know his child now Angela has to be mother and father to this child you know Angela seems very deeply hurt and I of course she is hurt but you know there's a lot of stories out here saying that Angela was very vindictive she didn't care about her baby's father and she treated him like crap I don't know what the story is only people that know what happened between them is them two and the people that's in their close knitted circle but anyways rest in peace to Angela's baby's father you know sorry to hear that and so, you know, Angela, she's back in New York. She's about to buy a house. Oh, she already brought the house, and it's a fixer-upper. And, you know, she's feeling sad. She's feeling depressed. She's feeling lonely. And her brother, JoJo, comes through. And then on top of that, you know, she has Romeo come through. Romeo comes through, and basically Romeo was like, I'll be whatever you want me to be. I'll be here for you. I got your back. I got you. And all this other stuff. And Angela was like, hey, listen, if you say that, you, re you really better be here. Be here for real, for real. And Romeo was like, I know. Romeo was in the confessional. It was like, you know, we were supposed to date things with getting back on track. And then, you know, life happens. And then Angela was like, yo, this is my life. This is my real life. This is what I'm going through. I'm like, damn, Angela, you came up. Your father's Reb Ron. Like, you didn't grow up in a hood. You grew up having everything. You grew up in mansions. You grew up with butlers. You grew up with maids. You grew up with all that other good stuff. And this is how it turns out for you that you end up dating a dough boy. He ends up getting murdered. And you end up being a single mother out of wedlock like you know I ain't judging you but damn the story didn't supposed to be like this for you but this is part of your story and the rest of your story will go on to be triumphant 
And so moving on from that situation, I was just like, damn, and Pep got her new man, and she's kissing her new man. She's happy with her new man. She got her a new boot, a new bae. And, you know, um, Pep got to be with a guy that she could be a boss with, that she's a boss. Like, she's not, she can't be with Master P because Master P is, is a boss too as well. And he got more ducats and more cheddar, so he would kind of have a little bit more control. And Pep can't be controlled. She can't be told what to do. So she need a young man so she can train him and teach him the way that she wants him to be and so he flies off and find another woman to treat her the same way that Pep treated him. So it is what it is with that situation. But she now she's dating her security guard. It's her man. And Pep had the nerve to say, I'm Whitney Houston. And he's Kevin Costner. I wouldn't you compare yourself to Whitney Houston when it already looks like you got a, a drinking problem on this show. So, hey, it is what it is. Right, y'all? And so we got Boog. Boog is out here wiling at 7-Eleven, running in and out of 7-Eleven, trying to rob it, running in the street, laying down on the ground. You know, it was just a sad situation. He's trying to convince us that, you know, he's clean and sober. His, sis his sister is, you know, texting him to come to her graduation, her graduation party. But we all know Boogie's not going to go because he doesn't want to face Dame. He doesn't want to face his responsibilities. He doesn't want to face his father. And plus, he doesn't like his father. He feels like his father is a trigger. You know, um, Boogie's issue goes back through childhood with his father you know when dame dash was running the street boogie was born boogie knew the dame dash that his sister don't know that's why she has a different type of relationship with her father and she's striving to do more but boogie has some secrets and has some things that he's been through and he's seen and maybe he didn't like the way that dame treated his mother too as well so it seems like you know Boog has a grudge with his father he didn't like the way his father you know, try to make him be something that he's not. His father tried to instill in him values to be strong, to be a king, you know, to be a, a boss and all this other stuff and don't take shit from nobody. But as you see, Boogie's not that type of person. He, he takes shit from everybody. And um, he's on drugs. And, and, you know, Dame feels like it's his karma because he used to sell drugs. So Boogie needs to get it together. Hopefully Boogie survives. Dame Dash is just glad that his son is is still breathing. And Dame Dash says, you know, Jesus love him. God loves my son because he keeps giving him second chance after second chance. So we have that situation. And then we move on to, you know, Vanessa and um, Angela. They meet up, basically. They're having, you know, they're having breakfast. And, and you know, um, Vanessa brings up about the pastry. You know, they made $50 million about 20 years ago um, or when they started the business. And basically, she wants to start the business up. Somebody wants to partner with her. And she's asking Angela if she wants to get into the business. Angela was like, I can't because all the other projects I have, they wouldn't allow me to because it'd be a conflict of interest. And then Angela was like, nah. And so Angela feels like, you know, we started this business together, so I don't think any one of us should do it separately. I was like, damn, that's selfish. Selfish than a motherfucker. So right there, it shows you that Angela can be very selfish. Even with her own sister. Now, she's selfish with her own sister. Imagine how she was with her baby daddy. So, moving on from that situation, you know, she brings up, the, she brings up oh, so what happened in Vegas? I heard that Romeo said that he had a crush on you. So, for real, for real, he had a crush on you. She was like, she didn't like that, so she's upset. Vanessa was kind of like cheesing and smiling like, hey, he liked me, girl. He liked me before he liked you. And Vanessa is just like, you know, he was just saying it just to, it just to be funny. You know, we was all just chilling and drinking. It was nothing. But Angela is not feeling like it ain't nothing. She feels like it's something. And so guess who calls right out right on time, even though it's probably just part of the storyline. Romeo calls and basically Romeo's inviting him to the, his yacht party that his father's throwing for their new business. And she was like, and so Vanessa was like, am I invited? She turned the phone around. Romeo looked at her and she was like yeah and then Angela was like if you want the details you got to call him yourself and so she hung up on him because she was she she ain't happy with that shit because she thought she had one up and then we have you know um Egypt Egypt basically talking to her mama and telling her how she feels how she's upset and like she's mad at Tyran she's mad at TT the way that they tried to accuse her of being drunk and Sam taking advantage of her how they said that you know she was uh <laughs> decompetated and, you know, Pep was like, no, it's uh, <laughs> incapacitated. And so um, Egypt is just like, I haven't talked to them, whatever. Pep don't really give a shit about the, she don't give a shit about what Egypt's saying or what's going on with TT or Tyran because she's chilling. She's living her best life. She got her new color wigs. You know, she looking good. Pep is looking good. What's that? What's my weakness, man? Uh, uh, chilling for a bit. What's my weakness, man, man? Man, you know, that's pet weakness is about to be her daughter weakness, man. Ah! 
So we have that situation. So it is what it is. And Pep don't really give a shit about what Egypt's saying. But Egypt is upset. She don't like the way that they came bashing in, you know, when she was trying to elope. And, you know, Pep is still don't give a fuck. She was like, yeah, but you was trying to get married. And, you know, that night Pep was so Pep was incapacitated. She was the one that was real fucked up. She was toe up from the flow up. It was no joking about that. She was toe up from the flow up. And so, you know, Egypt was like, I'm going to have to see them at this yacht party. Pep, Pep is happy to come go to the yacht party. She ain't giving a shit what Egypt's saying. Egypt could miss her with that bullshit. Pep is like, you're going to have to work that out. Right now, I ain't got no drama. I had drama dealing with y'all last year, not this year. So then we have Brie and Dame Dash meet up. Basically, Dame Dash tells Brie about how terrible, you know, um, Boogie is, how Boogie is out there when... And, um, and just said, said, telling him that, you know, when, people, when all his messed up friends, you know, called him to say that his son was messed up. He was like, my son's hanging around some real, real terrible people. And when they called me, said, my son needs help, then, you know, there's something wrong. He was at 7-Eleven, strung out, drunk as a motherfucker, acting up in the middle of the street, trying to rob the store, everything. And basically... Um, Dame Dash is telling, you know, Bree that, you know, Boogie's all messed up and he's lying to you. I know you got a crush on him. You know, that's that Dame and Dash, you know, that's a Dash situation. But um, he's lying to you and he could be manipulating you, Blase the third. Bree was like, yeah, I understand. And she didn't know. She thought he was clean. Dame Dash does like Bree music. He's going to work with her. He wants her to have six records and she he wants her to be performing the six records and have her to start writing because he does like her music. I did like Bree music too as well. Brie has grown on me because I've been following her on IG and she's really a nice person when you get to you know the, her antics on the show she says she does it to keep the ratings up because it was going to cancel the show she does it because everybody else is scared to jump up and like be their self and just be more flamboyant like she is and so and, and that makes everybody nervous because they're trying to put on a persona but she's a cool chick like everybody on this show I don't have a problem with anybody on this show everybody on this show is pretty much cool um, I even I even defended Sam part of the season last year. And, you know, we'll get on to that. So we have that situation. So Bree's going to be make, working on her music. And Dame Dash is going to promote it and bring it to where it needs to be. That's what he says. And so then we have, you know, um, we have to talk about this. Egypt and Sam. You see Sam with that weave in his hair. Don't he look like oomph? What he look like? He look like he like it to be bent over. He look like Egypt has a deal down or so. So anyways, but Sam is only doing this because he got a lot of attention from the weave that he wore last season. So it's just something for him to stand out with because he didn't wear the shit on a yacht. He's talking about I paid for it. Egypt, I don't even know how you do it, girl. You just got bad taste like a motherfucker. So... She just got bad taste like it ain't nobody's business. And so here comes... It was funny when, you know, Brie came to the door and Sam said, you look like Tupac's daughter. Look at her with her blood rag on, you know, um, and um, her handkerchief and her sunglasses. She did look cute or whatever. And so basically they're having a conversation and, you know, that Egypt and... Um, Sam is letting it be known that they don't like T.T. T.T.'s messed up. T.T. was like, oh, look at him taking advantage of, you know, Egypt. He's out here marrying her. Get him, Ty. Get him, Ty. Get him, Tyrell. Get him, get him, get him, get him. And so it is that... It Tyran, you know, it is like that type of situation, but they look, but they're not understanding that they're thinking that Sam is taking advantage of her and Sam is older, more mature, and he has kids and he has been in, you know, relationships. He has like three or four kids. I don't know how many kids he has, but he has a litter of kids and he's been out there. He's been in the streets. He's been struggling. And right now, Egypt is like a come up for him because he's not working. You know, he got a car from, you know, um, what was her name? Pap. He got a car from her to basically do Uber. Do you think, you know, he's doing any Uber? All that weed, he's smoking all that alcohol you, he drinks. You think he's Ubering? Hell no, he ain't Ubering. And he ain't working. So how is he paying child support? So he's not setting like a good role model as far as he's, he's taking care of his kids unless he's actually getting paid from the show. So maybe, you know, his children's mother are actually getting support and he has more than one child mother. So that just shows you like he likes to stick it and put it in and make a baby and keep it moving. And it doesn't seem like he's taking care of his children. It seems like he's living off of Egypt. So if Pep take her money in that house away from Egypt, Egypt, you know, he'll leave Egypt. He'll be gone into his next meal ticket. He's the type of person that gets in where he fits in. He can be a chameleon, a, a chameleon too as well, but he's not a 
a bad guy. He just needs some training and he needs a man to show him how to be a man and how to act the right way. And what he's portraying is not the, is not a man. He's only portraying what he's seen in the neighborhood, what he's seen on TV and what he heard in music as being a man. But if someone was able to sit down and teach him how to be a man and how to get to where he needs to get to, then it'd be good. But one thing he does know, he got a good woman in Egypt. And so anyways... They are talking about TT that she's a shit starter, she's no good, and you know Sam calls her a cunt and whatever. TT's a good person, especially when it comes to looking out for you know her her you know for you know um Egypt. Yes, yeah, she's messy. She gets into drama because she's also trying to stay relevant and make the show pop because it can get canceled because some of these characters are very dry on this show. So anyway, so now. She's in, so now they don't like TT no more. TT, TT's out of the way. And so basically calling her, he called her a cunt. And, you know, um, Egypt is upset with TT, basically. And then they're upset with Tyran because he, be, because she was, she told Tyran, get him, get him. And so Sam is feeling a certain type of way. He felt like he was punked on TV. He felt like, he felt like he was rushed up on or whatever. And he was outnumbered. So now he really has a bone to pick with Tyran. But Tyran feels real disrespected too as well because he said he was trying to build a relationship with, you know, um, What's his name? Sam. But Sam went behind his back and tried to uh, marry his sister. And as Sam being the more of adult in the relationship and having more experience and having children, that's where he should have stepped in and said, this is not the right thing to do. We make sure we need to get your parents involved, your brothers, your sisters, and everybody involved inside the situation instead of doing it behind their back because I'm going to look like I'm the person that did the shit because I'm grown and I'm the man I'm supposed to lead, not Egypt, but, you know, it is what it is. So, anyways, that's when Brie was like, you know what, I don't like TT as well. She's shady. She doesn't like TT because of that Angela situation. Yeah, right. It goes back to her battle, them two battling for Romeo. Romeo didn't want either one. So, Brie, you better be happy that Romeo didn't hit you and bounce like he did TT. He hit TT up and he bounced on her and, you know... So that's how that situation went. So I was just like, damn. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, so Bree was like, yes, I can, I can finally tell my frustrations why I'm mad, why I'm upset and all this other good stuff. So it is what it is with that. So moving on from that situation. I was just like, damn. And so then we get Vanessa. She's talking to JoJo basically to tell JoJo she wants to start the Patriot business on her own. In so many words, and JoJo's proud of her, but JoJo was like, make sure you let your sister know. She already tried to. Angela's not trying to hear it. Angela ain't a part of it. And so we get TT. We get Vanessa. And it's funny how TT and Vanessa are just chilling. And then we get... um. Um, what's her name? Brie comes in. She greets everybody, but except for TT, just disses her. So does Egypt and Sam. They see TT, and they straight diss TT. They don't want nothing to do with TT. I was like, damn, what did TT do to y'all? So I'm like, mm mm mm. TT running her mouth got her in a lot of trouble. Now her running her mouth has caught up to her. It has caught up to her like it ain't nobody's business with her own her own niece. I mean or her cousin. Her cousin don't want nothing to do with her, so it is what it is. And um I'm just like, damn. Tables have turned this season. And so we have everybody upstairs on top of the boat. And everyone's chilling, have a good time. And Bree's trying to make, you know, Boogie jealous because she brought a man with her. She brought a date. Boogie's feeling a certain type of way. He's feeling jealous. But anyways, Boogie's doing good because he's not drinking on the yacht. And, you know, Romeo's happy that he's not drinking. But Boogie also missed his sister graduation, the graduation party. You know he wasn't going. We all knew he wasn't going to go. But, you know, Romeo was like, yo, Boogie's a DJ. He's going to be around liquor. He's going to be around everything. So... It's up to him to have self-control, so hopefully he has the self-control. Because if he doesn't have the self-control, it's going to be a problem. And so, um, you know, Bree kind of, like, makes fun of Kendall's husband, calling him, you know, basically an old wise man, or calling him, I, I forgot what the name that she called him. 
And so she she didn't diss him. She complimented him, and Kendall realized that it was a compliment, so it was all good. So it was all good. And so they start to have the conversation about the wedding, about the eloping, and, you know, Egypt and Sam is saying that they feel a certain type of way. They haven't talked to Titi. They haven't talked to... They haven't talked to her brother, they, Tyran. They haven't talked to them too, whatever. It's a bad thing. I'm like, damn. And so everybody's bringing it up, bringing it up. And so um, basically they've been avoiding each other. You know, TT and Tyran and, you know, Egypt and um, Sam have been avoiding each other. But, you know, it was going to come to the, it was going to come to the heads. So it does come to the head. And so we have, you know, this is Boogie telling, you know, um, Bree that I'm kind of jealous, kind of upset with you because, you know, you got a date here and everything. And But she was like, yo, when I told you I liked you and I care for you and I had feelings for you, you straight up laughed at me and was joking. So I'm over and I'm done. And she was like, what's up with you going on? What's up with you and that 7-Eleven situation? She was like, so what's up with that? Like, come on. She was like, what's good with that? And he was like, I'm here. I made it. God loves me. So, mm -mm -mm. I don't know. And so, finally, we get, you know, Sam. We get Sam, um, Egypt, Tyran, and TT. Basically, they have their conversation, and it totally goes left. I also got to say this. Master P was like, mm. he was liking him some Brie. He was like, Brie, you look good with that red hair. She was like, I got to go back to old me. And Master P was like, I want both of y'all. I was like, oh, shit. Go Brie. That's a come up. But I thought Master P was dating that billionaire Caucasian woman. So moving on from that. So we get the little situation where, you know, Sam, you know, Sam won Egypt. Like, hey, listen, I don't know. And we should talk to him or not because I'm going to go off. I'm going to be upset. Like, if, if the conversation goes left because he ran up on me, trying to corner me, and I feel a certain type of way. So when, some, when your partner threatens to hurt somebody that you love, somebody that you grew up with, what halfway grew up with, this is your brother. You can see the disconnect because anybody that threatened to beat up my brother, listen, we ain't going to talk right now. We're going to let the situation be. And I'm going to I'm gonna have to sit down and have a conversation with you. You ain't never touch nobody I fucking love. You ain't never touching my blood. You ain't never touching my brother. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down, if you want to live and see the mama, you ain't going to touch my brother. So I would have probably had that conversation another time. But we can see that she doesn't have that connect that she needs to have with Tyran because she was put on a pedestal and she was spoiled. And they kind of like grew up different because they are ages apart. And, and you know, and um, it's just messed up. So anyways, they have the conversation. And, you know, Pep, you know, really put Egypt on a pedestal. And basically, her brother was living somewhere else, and there was, he was nowhere around. She finally got him on the show. She was like, I bet Pepper's like, I did something for you, Tyran. I put you on the goddamn show, now leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> so, we have that situation. So, they're having a conversation, and it doesn't go anywhere because Egypt is trying to justify her eloping, and TT was trying, is justifying that you were wrong to do that without consulting your family. And, you know... And it just goes back and forth. There's really no type of understanding of anybody hearing what anybody's saying. And um, it really shows you the immaturity that um, Egypt does have. And then you would think TT would be more mature in this situation too as well. And try to pander and try to let Egypt express herself. And then express herself without being so uh, not being so sarcastic in her the way of her tone and moving her head and her eyes because Egypt wasn't doing all that because she knows that Egypt is young and she don't comprehend as well as you do TT so you need to take it easy and Sam just wanted to fight so Sam and Tyran go back and forth and Sam was like nah, I don't Sam was like I don't know if these guys gonna be invited to my wedding blase in a third you know and TT was like would your father wouldn't be happy if you eloped she's like oh my father wouldn't and, and then Egypt was like my father wouldn't be happy if I choose my own mind no, getting eloping. And so then, you know, Sam is like, oh, you was telling Tyran to come after me. And I don't like the way that you was all pulling up on me. Man, I felt that way. And so then, you know, Sam was the aggressor. He took off his book bag. He threw the table. And basically, they got it. Sam got his hand around Tyran's neck. Tyran got his hand on Sam's neck. And they're, like, pushing each other or whatever. And, you know, um, 
Egypt's in the middle. I don't know why um, Tyran didn't just fucking kick him in the forehead, punch him in the face, lay him out, body slam him. But I think because Tyran is a professional fighter, he has self-control where he's not going to attack unless he's attacked. But I wish he would have attacked. Um, because if you are, if you, if you are a personal, you know, fire, professional fighter, or you've been training all your life and you let this dude, Sam beat you up, it'll be, I'll, I'm done. I'll be done. I'll be done, done, done. Oh my goodness. So anyways, they yelling, going back and forth. It's a shit show. It's embarrassing straight up and down. Everybody's looking or whatever. Egypt is just yelling. What the fuck is Pep and her security guy? Security guy her security guy was supposed to run through. Where was Pep at? Pep was in the bottom of the boat getting her thing on. No, sir, but she probably was. So we have that situation, and it just goes totally wrong. Basically, it wasn't cool minds and cool heads. They basically, they should have been around it with just no alcohol and just them sitting and talking. And I believe that, you know, Sam and Tyran should have talked alone because Sam has to prove something to everybody around him that he's not a punk and basically his reputation is everything so he wants to defend his reputation because he feels like you know Tyran pull up on him but Tyran was like yo me and you was working out we was cool we was talking about we're brothers and all this other stuff and then you go behind my back and elope and he was like how are you gonna lead her when she's leading you you don't need you don't have a mindset to get married and he doesn't have the mindset to get married for Tyran to speak like that saying that Sam doesn't have the mindset to get married and he's not ready he's not capable just shows you the maturity level that he's on. So I believe they should, uh, TT could have handled the situation better. Tyran should have just walked away from the situation or he should have beat the shit out of Sam. Peace him out. Tell me what you think.